Well, she's no stranger to our viewers as a former conservative leader, but it still can be a bit odd to see her working to advise a liberal cabinet on American trade policy. But Ronna Ambrose sits on the government's NAFTA advisory council. She joins us from Toronto. You had that meeting today, Ronna. Any fresh approaches suggested behind those closed doors for this government to try in the next round? Well, we did have a meeting today. It went on for a couple hours. Um, you know, I, I have to say I continue to be impressed with the level of... Uh, dialogue and there's people from all walks of life, public sector, private sector, conservatives, NDP, liberals, all working together. So that that is important. It's important for the business community. It's important for workers in Canada to know that everybody's working together to come to some kind of a solution on NAFTA. But Don, we go into the Montreal round next week and this will be a crucial round because for the last couple of months there hasn't been any politicians at the table so it's been a little quieter. Only half the issues were on the table, and it was the easy stuff we were talking about. In Montreal, the politicians will be there. All the issues will be on the table, including all the tough ones. So I think it's going to be difficult. It's going to be crucial. And I think the problem for us continues to be that Canada is working hard. Canada is making you know, proposals. And unfortunately, the Americans are not putting anything on the table. Um, and so... That's a big concern. Yeah, I know. It's almost a bit of a banging your head against the wall exercise. But I, I, I'm curious how yeah. you size up Montreal. Is this kind of the, the break or, uh, make or break round in your view? Well, I think we do. Everyone, I think all parties are going to have to show some kind of progress. Very little progress has been made. And this has been going on for a number of months now. Um, I think the concern that a lot of people have is that so little progress has been made and so little effort is being made by the Americans that you start to worry that they are, and we've worried about this all along, that they're just pre-positioning for Trump to be able to say, we're out, you know, we're going to put down our six months notice and pull out a NAFTA. Because, you know, if they're not making any progress, then they can say, look, we're making no progress. So, you know, what's the point? We might as well pull out of this thing. And I mean, it, it was just yesterday that he was saying that, you know, NAFTA is a terrible agreement. So he hasn't exactly changed his tune, but, um, you know, I guess all we can do is to stay at the table, be tough, hold our ground and continue to offer at least the be willing to negotiate. But when you don't have a dance partner on the other side, it, it becomes really difficult. <laughs> it is. A, so it's hard to tango with one. All right. I, but I'm curious, though. Right. Uh, how, you know, when does Canada or should Canada be at the point to start compromising on these so-called red lines, whether it's the, the dispute settlement mechanism or American content demands? Is, is this at the moment when you have to say, we're going to put some water in our wine on this? Well, look, I think Canada has said that we're willing to look at some different proposals. And I know that there's some things in the works, um, and, and that's been made public already around things like, you know, auto content. And, mm -hmm. and it'll be up to the government to come forward with some of those ideas. But just remember that, you know, we also have to have somebody willing to negotiate. And right now there is just complete lack of flexibility on the American side. It's basically their, their way or the highway. So it, it is really difficult. Um, so we should not give up any sovereignty. We should not, you know, give away the farm. I mean, that's not the right thing to do from the Canadian side of things. I mean, I think all Canadians need to know that on the American side and for the Trump administration, and in particular for the president, this is an extremely political negotiation. So we are caught up in that. Um, so, but Montreal will be important because it will be the opportunity, hopefully, to make some kind of progress. Bill, and I guess we'll have to see if the Americans are willing to are willing to work on this. Do you start floating a plan B, or is it premature? I mean, Donald Trump says the way to a good deal is to threaten to rip it up, and maybe after rip it up to get a good deal. Does Canada start saying, all right, you know, we do have a plan B. We're just not, you know, here's what it's going to be. You know, I think we have to stay stay at the table and continue to work towards some kind of a negotiated agreement. But right now, you know, we're unfortunately, um, we have a partner on the other side that's not ne necessarily wanting to do that. I think the other thing, Don, to think about is the Mexican election. One of the things, I, I think now people are starting to think that Trump will signal his six month pullout. It's not if, but when. Mm -hmm. um, but let's not forget, even if Trump says we're pulling out 
And when he does that, you've got he's got at least a six month notice to Congress. You know, even after that six month, there's still all kinds of things that need to happen. NAFTA is not going anywhere in the meantime. Right. So even if that happens, we wake up the next day, we still do a huge amount of trade with the Americans. We have a massively integrated economy with them. So look, I think a lot of this is political and so um, there, it's a wait and see approach. But I think Canada is being a constructive, <laughs> about as constructive as we should be. Um, and we'll see what happens in Montreal. All right, we will see. It doesn't sound terribly optimistic, but <laughs> let's not give up yet. Okay, Ron Ambrose, always a pleasure chatting with you. Thanks for coming on the show. <laughs> okay, thanks for having me, Don.